I'm going to try something a little different that the Lord has laid upon my heart. I don't want to preach a whole lot, but I got this song that's been on my heart for a couple weeks now, and uh, I want to try something a little different, but before I do, I was watching Sister St. Jean over there worship the Lord. Yes. And you know, we worship the Lord different than they worship the Lord. Um, not different, I don't want to use the word different, but... Um, in America, we're spoiled. In the story. We've never been in a major crisis to where most of us have lived without food. When 9-11 hit America back in, I think it was, what, 2000, I guess it was. 2001, whatever it was. America thought that they were over with. Remember when they, the church, you know, was an influx there? We had four, a few more people come to church. It didn't influx like it should have influxed. Our pastor gave us wonderful messages on the coming of the Lord, and the Lord is coming back. I just want you to know that, whether you believe it or not. Um, but when 9-11 hit, you know, America, then everybody started writing songs and coming together, and, and then all of a sudden it kind of... You see, a few, you see a few people every now and then with 2000 or whatever it is, 9-11, 2001, never forgotten, you know, our heroes. And I'm a patriotic person, too. I served in the military. I'm way patriotic, as a matter of fact. But I was watching them sing, and, and this sister, if I'm not mistaken, she was in an earthquake. Earthquake, earthquake in her country. I've never been in an earthquake. I've never had to really begged for God's mercy in that situation. I've had to beg for God's mercy in what I thought were tight situations because I was wondering where where God was in certain situations, but he was right there all the time. But as I've got to thinking about this, this song that's been on my heart for a couple of weeks come to me and you know, in America, and, and, and then I'm going to bring it back down to our local ecclesia, and, and I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the church more today than I ever have before. Amen, yeah. I listened to Brother Carlson give us that wonderful message today, and I, I've heard some messages in my life. I mean, I've been here for many years, but I've heard men preach messages, and of course, Brother Marlowe, he preaches some awesome messages, and it's hard to top some of his messages. But Brother Carlson really struck me today when he started talking about faith. Yes, sir. Amen. And he used the example of how you exercise. If you're a human being that um, basically just goes home and sits there, and as my dad talked about, just feed your face all the time, and you sit at the table and you don't do any exercise, you, you get, you know, Get over oversized. Uh, I don't. I don't. I won't use that word, but you can use that word. Um, now, me personally, I've been cutting back on some few things, and you know, I'm down about nine. Was it nine or ten pounds? I think. But if I never exercised, I'm just losing pounds. Follow me. If you look at a weight, a, a, a weightlifter, and, and as he begins to lift weights, you see all the bodybuilding shows, how them guys get out there, and yeah. they do all that stuff that they do, you know, <laughs> how they do that. Well, Lou Ferrigno was one of them, wasn't he, wasn't he, big guy? But you see him today, he's big, but he's also got, he's fat. That fat is, that muscle has turned to fat because he quit what? exercising it, didn't he? He began, he quit using the ability that he had. Come on. Sister Betty, you was right by saying, could I be baptized? Is this the right time? Sure, it's the right time. Amen. Amen. Because you're exercising your faith. Yes. And when you're baptized here, you won't be baptized in the name of Bradenton Gospel Tabernacle. Amen. Whomever dunks you in that water will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. So you're exercising your faith. Yes. 
Never heard faith taught just like that in those few short words today. And it actually built my faith. Because why I'm here, I don't want anything in the world to hinder me from serving Jesus Christ. Brother Adolph, I appreciated what you had to say last night. Because you exercised your faith. How many times have you as an individual went home and said, I'm not happy with what was said tonight, so I'm packing my bags and I'm never coming back. I can't count them. I, I, can, I can't even count them on two hands and ten, and ten toes probably. But by the grace of God, we're still here. So I appreciate the Lord tonight, don't you? And I would I want to try something here. Brother Langford and Brother Harrison and Brother Rhodes, would you come help me? I, I know your brethren are going to go like, I cannot believe this guy. Because I know all of these guys and they're going to beat me up late. It's okay, I'm good. I can handle it. Brother Dean has a saying. He says, I'm 44 across and I can take it. So I can take it. But uh, if they would come help me. Brother Rhodes, yeah, you're, you're one of them. So... Yeah. <laughs> 